Hello and welcome back to video number two of our bulletproof buying video series. I'm Lisa Ammons from 772 Living. I'm a real estate broker here in Florida and I'm with Bryant Stuckey from SWBC Mortgage. And we are going to be talking about things that can disqualify you from getting a mortgage. <laughs> Oh, you're so excited to hear about this. Welcome to 772 Living with Lisa. So in our first video, we went over paperwork needed to get that pre-approval. In this video, we're gonna go over the things that may disqualify you from getting a mortgage. Oh no! Those are horrible things to hear. You know, loan denial, disqualification, but it does happen. So we're gonna talk about that. So Bryant and I have been in the business a long, long time. So we've seen lots of situations. And one of those situations is having a person that is pre-approved get their approval retracted. And it's a very heartbreaking situation. And it's normally due to an oversight from the buyer. So we have the customer under contract. They have their pre-approval. They've talked to you. They've given you their paperwork. You've got the loan process going on. Um, we're in the middle of inspections. We're going through the motions, trying to get them to the closing table. And um, during that time period, which is probably 30 days most of the time, what are some things that can happen during that time period? Things that a buyer might not think um, would affect him, but could certainly affect the loan approval. Uh, the things we see the most, sadly, and it seems like it's an everyday thing for most people, is to overuse your credit cards once your credit report has been pulled, mm -hmm. or go buy a new car, go buy that furniture, go spend a lot of money on things to prepare yourself for that house that you want to get into. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what, folks? your credit gets pulled a second time within 10 days of your closing date. So if you go do a new car, spend more money, mm -hmm. next thing you know, there's gonna be payments associated to those and those could disqualify you or now all of a sudden, you can't afford this house that you're trying to purchase, but we don't know that until 10 days before your closing when that second credit report gets pulled. It will get found. People think they can go through a couple of days before closing go buy a car, go do things, well guess what? We get notifications too. <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. a totally hidden thing because that's the number one thing as lenders we look for is that you can afford the debts that you're carrying. Right. So if we get you into one debt range and get you approved, mm -hmm. next thing you know you have more debt and that puts you into a different level. Right. So be very careful about doing that. Yeah. That's some very good information. I preach that to my customers all the time um, once we're under contract that you need to be an angel. Um, but also, in addition to just taking out more debt, which you don't want to do, what about employment situations? Ugh, I really hate when that one comes down the pipe. You know, we have a customer, we've got your pay stubs, uh, we've validated your employment with your employer. Mm -hmm. So, a week before closing, don't go quit your job. Don't go leave. Don't go think you're gonna go doing something else because now you've put your whole mortgage process and the whole purchase in detriment because now we have no validation of work or income. But changing employers. That's the catchy situation. So if you think you're going to move to a different job, that's okay. Let us know up front, but don't do it the week of your closing. If you do change employment, mm -hmm. you're getting paid the same way, then we can just wait and get a first paycheck, verify you're working with that new employer, mm -hmm. and we can still get you closed. But we need time to do that. It's not something that you can set up if you know you're closing on the 30th of the month, don't change jobs on the 29th. Yeah. We just don't have time to do that. And just like credit, right before closing, we do verbally call your employers mm -hmm and ask them to validate 
that you still work there, your income has not changed, and your continuation, key word there, continuation of employment will not change. Yeah. So it, those it, are the things to watch out for. So you will call their employer to verify they're still there. Absolutely. And that is usually done anywhere one to three days before closing. Before closing. So that is done in a shorter time frame than the credit right. actually. Yeah. So if you don't like your boss, don't mess that situation <laughs> up three days before closing. Correct. <laughs> okay. So don't go out and get credit. Don't lose or switch your job. What about money and deposits? Yeah, that one can be a real touchy situation. And not to lie, bank statements and verification of assets are probably the number one most frustrating piece of the process. Mm -hmm. uh, up front, that's why we ask for bank statements. If we see large deposits, we're going to ask where they came from because we have to validate that it is your money or that it came from another account that was yours. So up front, you know, we're talking 10% down. We validated your assets with your bank statements. You come to me once you're under process or once we're under contract mm -hmm. and we go, Hey, I want to change that to do 20% down. Now I don't want to deal with mortgage insurance. Well, I'm going to need to know where that extra money came from. Right. So one thing that people do or don't know is cash is never allowed. You can't go to your safe, you can't pull out that extra ten or twenty thousand dollars, go deposit in your account and think everything's cool. No mattress money. No mattress money at all. That is never allowed. Your own cash, cash from family members, it just will not be validated and will not be used. Okay. Now, an alternative to that is if you have a family member that can gift you the money mm -hmm. to do what you want, mm -hmm. that is allowable but we have to be able to track the family member's money that's coming to you. So you can't give them the cash to deposit in their account to turn around and give to you either because we'll have to validate the money coming out of the donor's account for that gift money. So all in all, don't use cash and don't think you can use cash at any level of a purchase. So the money needs to be seasoned in an account for how long? So if someone, let's say, has the cash in their safe or wants to go sell a vehicle in order to supplement the purchase, they need to do it two months, three months, four months ahead of the purchase in order to show that cash has already been there. How long, how far back is the bank going to go? Well, the further the better, but technically we only ask for two months bank statements. Okay. So if that large deposit shows up in those two months bank statements, mm -hmm. our hands are tied, we have to verify it. But right. if you did it three months ago, four months ago, anything outside of your two months bank statements mm -hmm. and we don't see it, right. then we don't ask about it. So if you're going to do it, talk about it up front before you go get under contract. Right. And if it takes 60 days before you can write a contract, that's fine if that's what we have to do because it's all about getting those bank statements and not seeing the deposits. Right. Strange deposits are not good. Absolutely. Well, I hope this information was informative. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you learned something, give it a thumbs up. And in our next video, video three, which I will put up right here, we're going to talk about the most exciting part of the loan process. There are exciting parts, and that is getting ready for closing, closing on your new home. We're going to talk about that in our next video. Stay tuned. The mortgage process has gone through many changes over the last 10 years. Check out this next video to see what you can expect.